Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Thanks for joining us at 7. I'm Wendell Edwards. Good morning. We're on top of several important stories on this Thursday. Right now, crews are working to figure out how an historic building collapsed in Meriden. It happened last night on Broad Street in between East Main and Liberty Streets. We're told it's been unoccupied for more than a decade. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Marcy Jones explains further. We were sitting here, the building, the building fell down. Just after 5.30 Wednesday evening, Meriden fire crews received a call of a possible building collapse. When they arrived to the vacant historical home on Broad Street, the roof had already caved in. The building inspector arrived shortly after and decided to demolish what was left of the remaining structure. While neighbors say they were taken by surprise, officials say this isn't entirely shocking. It's been vacant for like nine years. It caught on fire, so it's been vacant, but uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting this. That's crazy. The building's been unoccupied for quite a while. Apparently, um, I've been told since a fire around 2009, 2010, it's been un unoccupied. Marcy Jones, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. No one was hurt. Eyewitness News did end up speaking to the owner who says they were working on the building earlier that day, but everyone had left well before it collapsed. This morning, soon students in Killingly may be able to access mental health services. Last night, the school board approved a program they believe can make a difference, but many parents we spoke with believe that solution is merely just a band-aid. Eyewitnesses reporter Roger Suzanne is now live in the newsroom with those details. And Roger, good morning. Local families aren't all the only people paying attention to this. Oh, Wendell, you were exactly right about that. In fact, the State Department of Education has actually launched an investigation into why the Killingly Board of Ed rejected a plan to build a mental health clinic within the local high school. And last night, local board members approved a separate proposal, but calls now are only growing louder for a bigger change. One thing just about everyone agrees on is that there is a mental health crisis within the Killingly School District. In a recent survey, 15% of students between 7th and 12th grade who responded admitted to formulating a suicide plan. Concerned community members proposed building a mental health clinic within the high school, and district leaders received more than $3 million in federal grants after saying they'd use at least some of that money to pay for the project. But in a move that shocked many families, the Board of Ed eventually rejected the proposal and last night approved an alternative, a program called Rachel's Challenge. It's a student workshop named after a victim of the Columbine shooting that teaches emotional intelligence, where kids learn empathy, self-confidence, and resilience to bullying. But parents we spoke with feel the workshop alone falls woefully short of what their children need. Well, I feel that, that while they're stating that it, it's, it's um, not an alternative, um, they're not giving us any other options. I think the bigger issue is that it is not sufficient to address the mental health issues at our schools. And last night's decision is not the end of this trauma, not by a long shot. Many parents are still pushing for that mental health clinic, and the state, of course, is still investigating. And they want to know the answers to two questions. They want to know why the decision was made and also what happened to that missing money. Live in the newsroom, Roger Suzanne, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right, thanks, Roger. 7.03, uh, we have got some scattered shoreline showers. I promised you earlier this morning, if you joined us at 4.30, I was talking about the potential for some of these scattered shoreline showers, and they are moving in to lower Fairfield County. Good morning to you. Waking up with a little bit of rain right now, beneficial rain coming down in Stamford, Greenwich. Uh, you can see it moving through the lower Hudson Valley into lower Fairfield County here in Connecticut. So that's some good news. We do need the rain. I know the timing isn't great. It's during the morning rush, but you know we'll take anything we can get right all right you can see the bigger system moving to the south of Connecticut we're going to be on the northern fringe of this for the next three to four hours so that means shoreline showers are expected uh, particularly in southeast Connecticut uh, through about 11 o'clock this morning and then we'll be under partly to mostly sunny skies but you can see lightning and thunder associated with this out over the open waters of the Atlantic we're hoping that stays away from us and just get some beneficial raindrops here in the state all right, partly to mostly cloudy skies in New Haven, 75 amazing degrees this morning. That is mild and wild. 63, the typical overnight low. We're substantially above that. Windsor Lock, 66 degrees with a mixture of sun and clouds. Nice skyline there. Beautiful skyline in Torrington as well. And we'll take you right now to Waterbury where it's mostly overcast, uh, 69 degrees, about 6 to 7 degrees above average there. All right, so here are the numbers. Lower 60s for northwest Connecticut, but look at the numbers along the shoreline. 70 
75 degrees in New Haven and in Bridgeport, 74 in Groton. The dew points are also in the low 70s along the shoreline. That's downright tropical. We do have some better dew points in northwest Connecticut, uh, but everybody else is in the low to mid to upper 60s, if not lower 70s. Those dew points will be coming down starting tomorrow. We're down anywhere from 1 to 6 degrees cooler than 24 hours ago. That's uh, some good news, and the winds are calm, so no wind out there. This is a great map to show. Watch. It's a Friday. That's not a mistake. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the dew points drop dramatically, and that means lower humidity and nice, comfortable temperatures. All right, so here's early morning future cast tomorrow's weather today. Again, we're dealing with some of these scattered shoreline showers through about noon, uh, and then they're done, and then we're going to be under partly to mostly sunny skies for the remainder of the afternoon. And then tonight, a cold front rolls in with more showers expected. This is this evening around 9 o'clock. This is midnight. And then that winds down and leaves us with a beautiful day tomorrow. Here's the wider perspective. You can see partial clearing during the day today. And then here comes that front. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock tonight. And then tomorrow is just a gorgeous day with uh, mostly sunny skies and some delightfully low temperatures and low dew points. Today, we're talking about 83 to 87, partly sunny. Still a bit muggy. Sun is up. Hey, the sun was up at 5.55 this morning, Renee. 5.55? Yeah, 5.55, 5.55. Ah, sun sets at 7, right? This is pretty cool. 7.57 it sets, setting in the 7 o'clock hour. And then your uh, seven-day forecast includes 82 tomorrow, 81 on Saturday, 84 on Sunday. Looks like a real nice weekend. Monday night into Tuesday and Wednesday, rain. And that's beneficial. We need some rain around here. It looks like we're going to get some. And that is so good, such good news. Temperatures are only going to be in the upper 70s for Tuesday and Wednesday as well. So a little bit of a reprieve in the heat. 707 is now the time. Wendell, we'll send it back to you. Scott, thank you. Several people are recovering this morning after a tree fell on them. It happened last night in Thompson on Norman Hill Road. Pinpoint News Tracker shows you exactly where. We're told the tree split in half and pinned three people. Firefighters were able to rescue them. Three other people were hit by falling debris, but thankfully no one was seriously hurt. President Joe Biden signed a bill into law that will make it easier for veterans to get medical care after being exposed to toxic burn pits. Now we're hearing from one Connecticut woman, a widow, whose husband died from a tumor after he was fighting overseas for years. Berlin's Amy Antioho and Tihoho says this law came too late for her family. Her husband Peter was exposed to burn pits while serving in Afghanistan. After coming home from deployment, he seemed okay, but he soon discovered a deadly tumor. Mark, our son, was two at the time when he was diagnosed and given about nine months to live. And um, he lived for about two and a half years, kept fighting. And during that time, I missed time with him because I was fighting the VA. Other veterans will now get the care they deserve thanks to the new PACT Act. Pandemic paychecks are on pause this morning. A plan to give essential workers up to $1,000 has now been put on hold. The official website to apply for the funds was supposed to launch yesterday, but that has now been pushed back indefinitely. We're told the soft launch over the weekend caused that website to crash. And an official launch will happen in the next few days, we're told. The plan would offer bonuses up to 1000 bucks to people who worked in health care, grocery stores, and many other essential professions throughout the pandemic. We thank you for tuning into Eyewitness News on this Thursday. Remember, you can always get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. As we leave you with a live look outside, please have a great day.